What's going on guys? Um, good to be back. I uh, got some stuff to talk about. Uh, two different things. Uh, one, the auction's going up for the week. Since I am listing cards again, um, seems like it was kind of like, I I'm kind of in a cushiony financial situation, so I didn't really feel like I needed to sell anything else, but I've decided to make it more of a routine so that I'm good about uh, cycling product in um, and that way it, I won't feel so guilty once I'm like hardcore collecting again um, because I need to get well versed with selling stuff and see what these auctions realistically uh, bring in. Um, so far it's been pretty good. Um, so I'm going to show you guys the stack of cards that I've listed as well as I just listed a bunch of bulk and some code cards, about a thousand cards total. I'm going to see how that one goes. Probably not gonna go that well, considering that not a lot of people buy bulk, and two, not a lot of people use those code cards. At least, I don't think a lot of collectors are using those code cards, but I'm sure there are a lot of people that want to play the online uh, game and would use those code cards. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, that could be a big haul for somebody, uh, whoever wins that auction, um, because there's 550 code cards in that auction from all different products I've bought the past couple years. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, without further ado, um, we're gonna talk about the cards that I'm putting up for auction. And then I also want to talk about, I'm gonna do something different. So I mentioned in my last video that I was going to focus less on stuff that I didn't have and focus more on stuff that I had that I could actually talk on, that I could actually educate people on uh, potentially, maybe even educate myself on because I am no expert and I'm constantly learning stuff. So I've got this big fat stack of promo cards that I want to talk about in a little bit. Um, really a weird, weird way that I've found that collection, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, I think it's kind of special. I've never talked about it. I've never brought these cards up on the channel before. So I think that's pretty cool. But uh, without further ado, let's go into this. So um, I've got a fossil um, hypno that's going to be going up here shortly. Um, Oh no, that's already gone up. All these have already gone up already. Put that guy in there. It's a pretty nice, all these are like kind of LP for the most part, but I'm just showing you guys what will be going up here shortly. Um, I know I should probably just zoom in. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna zoom that in right there. So you guys can see that very clearly. Yes, yeah, so then we've got our Jungle Neoquin, which, my goodness, it's actually going to be enjoyable going over the stuff that I'm going to be auctioning, uh, because honestly, some of these cards are just, I love vintage. I don't care that these cards aren't worth that much, and I'm not even going to get that much for them. Um, I've, I've got over a thousand hollows sitting in front of me that I'm trying to figure out what to do with what I'm going to end up letting go, but I've been, these are all accumulated from buying collections, and God, I've got maybe four five to ten of these Nido queens but i can never get enough of this card i think this card is beautiful it's absolutely gorgeous the the pink roses behind this card that beautiful kind of teal color that Nido queen has um, i just really really love this card and this one is in phenomenal shape um, that will be going up on the ebay that's the back of the card no surprises there uh, we've got an Electrode. I'm really not that big of a fan of this card, but I will say the gold hollow behind it looks phenomenal. So there's that. Show you guys the back. Pretty played, but the front looks pretty decent. We've got Kabutops, a beautiful card here. I would love to pull these cards out of the packs. Um, maybe someday when I can afford to actually continuously open vintage packs, that'd be so cool to actually open that up. Uh, this is a card I would not want to get out of a vintage pack. Man, that would be a huge, that'd be a huge L, honestly. Um, even a Muck in like a PSA 10, I don't think is going for that much. Maybe like two or 300, maybe more if it's a 10. Uh, I know in a 9, these probably aren't even going more than 100 bucks. But I don't know. Maybe I would be shocked to, to look into that, but I'm not entirely sure. But we got a Muck. That one's going up. Uh, we got a Vile Plume. This one's actually in really, really good shape. Um, this file plume's going up. This Aerodactyl, which I did not want to sell, but it is what it is. I'm gonna pull this out of the top loader. 
And this one's definitely played, so it's it's fine to let go of this. But uh, I don't even care if the cards are played or not in the best condition. Um, I just think that they're beautiful cards, and it's just hard to let go of them, regardless of what the condition is. And honestly, if these are fetching 10 maybe $15 now in their condition, for the most part, maybe they'll go a little bit higher than that in the auctions. We'll just we'll see what happens. But if these cards are worth this now, I just keep thinking like, what are all these hollows going to be worth in five, 10 years? If I just put them back in the box and just forgot about them and said, Hey, I have a crap ton of these hollows, these old hollows that aren't worth much, but I'm going to keep holding on to them. I feel like they would all be worth at least 30 or $40 down the road. Um, beautiful cards. Uh, they're just timeless to me, but whatever. I need to downsize my collection a little bit. I'm not selling off my collection, but I am trimming the fat. Um, and I've got a long way to go. And I'm still getting very used to doing auctions. So, but it's something that I think I want to continue doing and I want to make it kind of a routine. So we'll see how that goes. Um, this one's a little bit different. We got a Neo Destiny uh, light Azumarill. Take that out of the top loader. Show you guys closer up. And I do have the eBay linked. You guys can pop in there, see what they're going for. They're all kidney foundation charity auctions. Um, they're all free shipping. They're all one penny starting auctions. So really not even worried about what I'm gonna get for the cards. Um, the exposure is kind of cool though. Like honestly, if you're thinking of, if you're trying to think of ways to get more exposure on YouTube, I feel like doing an eBay would actually be really, really smart because then those people are gonna look and see if you're legit. Uh, we got this ditto right here. That one's gonna be going up. And then last but not least, I wanted to put something that was a little kind of heater card in there. We got our uh, Blaine's Moltres. I'm about to take this card out of the sleeve. I love this card so much. I really don't wanna sell this one. I got this one out of a collection not too long ago, actually. Um, I paid 300 bucks for, I paid 300 bucks for a collection I'm pretty happy with what I got overall. I got a lot of first edition vintage cards out of that collection, so that was pretty cool. Um, and for 300 bucks, I would never get deals like that on eBay, that's for sure. Um, and this was one of them. I was really, really happy when I saw this card. I thought I was gonna be able to get it graded at some point, even though I'm not big on grading, but uh, here's the card. As you guys can see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus that again one more time on this card. I'm gonna use both my arms. This card is gorgeous. It's honestly a beautiful card. There are surface scratches. I don't really care about that sort of thing. Um, the, the, the hollow pattern is beautiful on this card. It's honestly beautiful on this card. Legendary bird. Blaine, one of the best gym trainers like of all time. Like This is just a sick card. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a swirl between the two wings up at the top. Beautiful card. The only issue with this card, and you guys might be able to see it on camera, you might be able to see it. Yeah, there's surface scratches on there. It's not pristine, it's not perfect, but it's still a beautiful card. And I'm trying to show you guys, you guys can just barely, barely see that indention right there. There's just a tiny, whenever you're buying collections, everything looks so much cleaner. And then you start, you know, you get, you get the cards up close and you start to really analyze them. And you're like, oh, look at that crease, okay. So let me, the card's beautiful. Uh, let me zoom that out. So that's everything going up for auction. I figure Blaine's Moltres, if this card did not have the indention where it does, I feel like this would be a $50 card, which is kind of like one of the nicer cards that I put up. Um, as I start to do more math in my head, I'm like, Orion, if you have seven, about $70,000 left in terms of like I promised myself, I am going to make back every single penny that I sold in Pokemon cards. And originally I think it was like $84,000 that I'd spent on Pokemon cards or maybe like 90,000, but I know, I know right now it's sitting at like, I think 70 grand, I think 70 grand. I think I've made 23 or 24 in the past two years selling cards just and and pokemon theme decks mostly on mercari i did really well um last year on mercari but um 
now I'm trying out eBay just to get this stuff going on a schedule. Um, as much as it pains me, but I know that I have at least $70,000 to make up for and stuff that I need to sell to justify all the money that I spent the past couple years. Um, right now I have savings, I have no debt, I feel really, really good about it. That's actually making me more excited to do videos and talk to you guys and do my next live. I'm burnt out from working so hard. Right now, uh, our family bar has become like the main focus of all my time. Um, I do think in the long run, putting more time into the bar right now is going to pay off way more than me spending all my time buying products on eBay, doing auctions, running up credit card debt, doing YouTube videos nonstop. I love it and I'm gonna continue doing it, but the, the pace that I was doing it at just was not sustainable. And I think a lot of people could tell that. They were like, this dude is just collecting like crazy. Um, but I'm really glad that I have friends in this community and other people that are way more knowledgeable than me that I've been talking to. And I'm just learning to rein it in. And I did in the last video, I think there's a lot of people that agree with me that Scarlet Violet is just not a great era. Um, I think no matter what, the franchise is gonna be fine. I think it's gonna come back really hard. I think there will be some banger sets in this era, but I think for the most part, None of us are as hype about Scarlet and Violet as we were about Sword and Shield. But even in Sword and Shield, there were just some sets that just, I pulled, I opened a lot of Evolving Skies, a lot of Fusion Strike. I mean, I'm selling 550 code cards on eBay. Like I opened a decent chunk of product. Um, I never, I barely ever got any alt arts. The only alt art I got was a Celebi. And the Celebi is like not even worth much in a PSA 10. Um, but, uh, <sighs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm learning to rein it in and I feel really good. I figure in the next, I don't know. Um, I think in the next two to three years, I'll probably have enough sales to have justified everything I bought the past two years. Um, I haven't even gotten into the valuable stuff yet. Obviously you guys are going to see a lot of that stuff. Um, there's some things that I already sold that went off in auctions that I didn't get to show you guys. Um, but I did actually sell a, uh, a Game Boy game. I picked up a, I picked up a Game Boy Pokemon Silver Edition, Silver version. And I picked that up for like 140. Hey, get, get out of here. Get out of here. This cat that is my friends that we've been watching now for almost two months. It wants to jump into the game room. We have a little like open loft sunroom area and it's always trying to jump where the light is set up. Get, 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 get. I'm really not a cat person. Just putting that out there. Um, anyways, what, what was I, what was I saying? Anyways, there was a Game Boy Silver version that I picked up. Like there are deals to be had and there are moves to be made even in this market, even as people I think are kind of phasing out of Pokemon. As much as I'm I'm watching a bunch of auctions and I have a bunch of stuff on my watch list, like I'm still, I'm not pulling the trigger on anything. I haven't bought anything. I think we're coming up on like six weeks now. I haven't bought a thing. I feel really good about that. I'm really stacking up my money. That feels great. But um. I just keep thinking like, am I still missing out? If I would have just kept collecting stuff and, and, and just started selling more, would I have made it work as a sustainable business? And so I'm kind of trying to prove that to myself now that I am going to sell $70,000 worth of product in the next year or two. I'm not going to sell it in a month. I'm not looking to buy or sell anything. I have a decent income, but I am looking to justify my purchases from the beginning and make this sustainable because I don't want to stop collecting. I don't want to stop looking at Pokemon cards and stop learning about old sealed product that I don't have yet. Like I am going to attain all the stuff that I'm looking for. I'm just going to do it in a more rational time frame. But um, I'm getting so off topic here. I picked up a silver version for $140 and I just, I turned that around like last month I sold it, I think it went in auction for like $220, which um, after shipping that out and after fees, I still netted like 60 bucks on that. Um, of course you got taxes, you know, if you're reporting all the money that you're making, selling this stuff online, you're gonna take a hit on taxes on that. But still, let's, I made 60 after, you know, after shipping fees, 
realistically, I probably am still netting like $40 from that. That's not much, right guys? But what is your money gonna do with $140? You, you're not gonna make, you're not, you can't do a whole lot with $140 and make and, and be lucrative with it. But you can still do that in this in this little niche, in the Pokemon niche, you can still do that. And I find that very interesting. And I hope in a year or two to report on that and you know let you guys know what my strategies were. I think for the most part, everybody just, Everybody just has to learn on their own. And, and I've heard this advice before, um, what I'm about to tell you guys. And here I am saying it again, to just learn as much as you can about the market. Watch products. I get butt hurt every week when I'm watching stuff, I really wanna buy it, but I'm letting it go to see what others are willing to pay for it that I would normally be competing against. And um, the thing is, if we all, if we all chill out for a little bit, if everybody just chills out with the Pokemon card collecting for a little bit, the market has nowhere to go but down a little bit. Like we really are controlling the market. All of us collectors, we are controlling the market if we acted together. And I'm not trying to be bearish about Pokemon, but like I, it would be nice to collect more affordably and not be spending the kind of money that I've been spending the past two years on cards. Cards have shot up just to phenomenal new records, right? And I've been one of those people paying those new record prices on cards and finding out now that if I were to auction a lot of those cards, they would not get what I paid for them. There's some stuff that I would do really well on, but most of the stuff that I'm gonna make money on was stuff that I bought locally for cash, no tax, no shipping, no weight, just cash deals, and then selling that stuff online is very lucrative. And you know, maybe Facebook Marketplace is a great thing to do about that. But again, reiterating the important advice I was trying to say just now, watch the market, watch this stuff. Because if you're cash flush and you got a lot of dry powder and dry powder is kind of an investing term with the stock market, it's kind of when you have money on the side ready to make a move, then you're good to go. A lot of stuff is gonna happen this next couple years. I'm telling you right now, a lot of stuff is gonna happen. The Pokemon market is going to come down. It's gonna be a little stagnant. I think modern stuff in the end is still gonna end up, you know, doing very well. But I think during the era of Scar of, of Scarlet Violet, during this era, for the next solid year and a half, maybe even two years, a lot of the stuff is gonna be stagnant. And then after that two year period, after that year and a half goes by, I think a lot of stuff is gonna start moving. It's gonna do great. Um, You've got to ask yourself, do I have that much time to wait? Or would it be better for me to have a lot of money on the sidelines? And then once a year and a half has gone by, buy all of these sets before they start moving up. And then I see those gains and I see that movement immediately. That's a little risky because then you're playing the waiting game. You're trying to time the market. That usually never works out great. Um, a more, a more um, passive, um, a more passive strategy would just be to buy each set whether it's one booster box, one ETB, one pack art, whatever, whatever you wanna do. It's you, it's you, only you know your personal situation. Um, but for me, I would like to buy one case or two cases or maybe what I did with Scarlet Violet because I thought it was gonna be major set release, but I was wrong. I bought four, or four or five cases of Scarlet Violet I think I bought four, I'm not sure. That was kind of overkill. But I also was factoring in the fact that that was the first um, the first set of Scarlet Violet. A lot of these base sets aren't great, but they tend to do well over time. Right now, Sword and Shield base is sitting at $280. So I, I saw somewhere 2,500 for, or 2,100 for a case of Sword and Shield base. That's nuts if you bought Sword and Shield base at $100 or less a box back when Sword and Shield began. Um, it's also the end of the Yellow Borders, even though I have a feeling they're gonna bring back Yellow Borders. Yellow Borders, in my opinion, are not gone entirely. If they are, Scarlet and Violet and Crown Zenith are going to be two very important sets, Scarlet and Violet being the beginning of Silver Borders in the US, and Crown Zenith being the pinnacle of Sword and Shield and really good pull rates and fun artworks and just a lot of amazing cards in that set. Um, 
I really do think Crown Zenith in a lot of ways is better than every other set in Sword and Shield, including Evolving Skies. But enough of that. I've gone off on tangents, which is one of my favorite things to do on this channel because it's my channel and I get to do whatever I want, you know, for, for the most part. Um, and that means going off on tangents and ranting and my viewers get that and you guys support me and you guys have my back and that's why I love what I do on this channel, which I really do feel is unique. I don't think there's a lot of people just ranting, talking about how they really feel about the hobby. Um, everybody has an agenda. Everybody has a, a, a motive, an ulterior motive. They either want, they're either bullish or they're bearish or whatever. It's like my motives telling you guys if we were all together and we all chilled on, on collecting and investing in the hobby, which I was very bullish when I was hardcore into it, you know, the last two years, very much bullish on the hobby, but I was also spending absorbent amounts of money on the hobby too. And so my opinions were in a lot of ways biased. So now I'm trying to have a fresh opinion, despite the fact that I bought a lot of Scarlet Violet, I'm kind of saying, okay, maybe I made a mistake there in the long haul, probably not, but in the time being, it'd be a lot better to have all that cash, um, uh, all that cash ready and on hand right now. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and get into this. You guys, if you've been waiting to hear about these promos, thank you so much. So here's the story on these promos. So. What we have here, we'll take this first one out, and this one actually has a crease. I wonder if the worst ones are on the bottom. I don't think many had like creases or any damage. Mm, it looks like it's really just, it was really just a couple of them. Yeah, okay. Anyways, showing you guys this card anyways, because it's awesome. Okay, so. Taking this out of the sleeve. So this is an Upper Deck Magazine War Turtle Base 2 promo. Now, this is not just an ordinary looking promo card from, from, the, from, the, uh, from first glance. This card just looks like the ordinary Base 2 War Turtle. If you notice right here, there's a little bit of some shiny, shiny, shiny going on right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see that? That is a W right there. That stands for Wizards, Wizards of the Coast, which Wizards of the Coast was printing Pokemon up to 2003, 2003, 2002, I believe. Um, so there's your Wizards of the Coast stamp. Now, why is this so interesting to me? Why is this so cool to me? One, because it's this golden, beautiful stamp, and there were other cards that featured this. I believe there was a, there's a, uh, a jungle Pikachu that features the wizard stamp. I believe it's lower in the card and not in the picture frame. I'm not entirely sure, but the War Turtle has it in the picture frame. Honestly, this is just such a cool card though. I, I'm a huge fan of Squirtle. Any of the starters from Gen 1 to Gen 3, they're fantastic. Uh, but War Turtle just, he's just sick. This is a beautiful artwork. The animation style is just so simple. The colors are vibrant. This is a big reason why I just love the vintage cards. I think the texturization of modern is really phenomenal, but I just, I'm biased. And I know that this stuff is not gonna be around for very long and soon it's gonna get really hard to find. So you guys can see that little wizards promo right there. Now let me zoom that in one more time. See if we can get it even, even better. So. You guys can definitely see that Wizards promo right there. It should be pretty clear. It's just harder to see on my end, but I'm really trying to show you guys with as much clarity as possible. So you guys see that wizard stamp. Let me show you something interesting. Now I have uh, four of these, but here we have the same card. You guys notice anything different about this one? I'm trying to show you guys, I'm failing. You guys notice something up with that W? it appears that this one has a double wizard stamp. Now, you guys might be thinking, why is he ranting about this freaking this top deck promo that's probably only worth 20 bucks or 15 bucks? I have seen some, I'm gonna focus it back on myself because I'm getting annoyed. Um, I have seen some uh, wizards of the Co the wizards gold stamp war turtles going for like eighty to a hundred dollars. If it's a grade um, eight to ten, it's really you're really fetching a nice little premium. And I think a lot of these would be probably sevens or eights. Um, 
But what's really most interesting is the one that's different um, from the this single stamp. So I'm gonna place them right next to each other so you guys can see the difference. This is a really, really cool error. I've never seen anything like this. I've looked into it. I don't see threads about it. I don't see anybody talking about it. It's just one of those weird things, kind of like people who are really into error cards, they'll find anything that's out of the ordinary to make the card special. Um, and while I don't exactly agree with that in terms of value, this is one of those things that's really, really interesting and neat. And you can tell is a factory error and it's just really cool. And I'm glad to show you guys this because I put it off for a really long time. Um, now we're gonna zoom in to those. Uh, they're side by side. And you guys can see that they double stamped this one. You know, I don't know how that could have happened. I guess they would have had to stop the production line entirely and then they would have kept it rolling. And what would have happened was when they started it back up, it started printing on the same cards again and, and went forward. Um, but I've got three or four of these, which leads me to believe these double stamp ones. Um, and mind you, mind you, I have a big stack of about 150 of these. So there were a lot of them in here and only, you know, as I sifted through them, looking for any differences, looking for the best condition ones, um, there was only three, four of these that had this double stamp. And I actually put this with my more valuable cards because I do think there's some value associated with this error, but I have no idea how to price it. I have no idea if anybody can, um, give me an idea of what that might be worth, or maybe it's not even worth anything. And I'm just, it's all in my head, but I just think it's so cool that it has that double stamp and I'm trying to get it just as close as possible. So you guys can actually see this in high definition. I, I think that's pretty good right there, but isn't that cool guys? I know you can't say anything back to me, but I still think that this is so cool and I've been putting it off for such a long time, but you can see this one is very, very clear. And then this one is just like, it's just, it's just crazy. It's, it, I'm not even sure if it's double stamped. It might even be triple stamped, but, um, no, it's just double stamped. But I, I I just find that really, really cool. And I wanted to share it with you guys. And there's a lot of stuff that I'm gonna start just sharing with you guys um, out of my personal collection uh, that I think is really cool. And hopefully you guys can enjoy it and appreciate it as much as me. Also, hopefully someone can, um, I'm struggling to get this back in the top holder. So hopefully someone can educate me on this and let me know like, nope, that's just, a, that's just a minor error and there's a lot of them out there. They just, you don't see them for sale anymore that often. Or if I truly have something kind of special there, um, regardless, it's a big stack of these upper deck promos. Um, and so I didn't even tell you guys how I got this. So there was a bar back that we were hiring for the bar, right? And um, this guy's, one of his family members uh, had worked for the city and they were collecting trash. And he said he'd accumulated a ton, a metric, like a trash bag. And if you go way back in my channel's history, you can find that video. If you're dedicated, you can find that video. But I bought a collection of, not even a collection, I bought trash bags of holographic cards and you know eventually we organized it into a box and i sorted everything out but i got some really really cool stuff out of that pickup and there were mostly damaged hollows that i'm gonna that's the whole point of why i'm starting to sell stuff is this stuff has value and i have duplicates you know triple quadruple of some of the same hollows um and i can definitely stand to let some of that stuff go but there are still deals to be had out there. I was primarily buying stuff off eBay, doing auctions, but I got a big box of hollows. Included in those in that big box of hollows were all these upper deck promos, which were scattered throughout the box. I, as I collected them, I was like, there's a lot of war turtles in here. And then I realized that they had that wizard stamp and I was like, oh my goodness. Um, and I put everything in, I organized everything into a box and then I did a video showing you guys everything I'd gone through after just briefly looking at it. Then I did a video showing you guys, 
um, the quality of everything. That was a banger pickup, and that was last year. So, or that was a year and a half ago. Yeah. So, it just goes to show that there's still really crazy local deals out there for people that just don't want this stuff. And um, one man's trash is, in this case, literally another man's treasure. So that's the story. That's the story with a lot of my valuable cards. It's the best deals that I have. Um, the nicest stuff that I have, a lot of it is from local pickups. Um, very few things that I own are bought online um, that I think are truly the be you know the best kind of deals that I got. I do have some nice stuff that I've purchased online, but I also, it's stuff that I paid an arm and a leg for. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I have a lot of other stuff that I plan on going over. I just have to decide like what's the next thing, what's the coolest, most unique thing that I could talk about in my collection. Um, but I have a lot of trimming to do. So that's why I showed you guys what's up for auction. That stuff will all get sold in the next seven days or all these hollows. And um, yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna put some of those War Turtle upper deck promos um, if you guys would let me know in the comments, like, is that something that you personally would be interested in? Uh, would you ever bid or buy a promo card like that? One of those wizards gold stamp upper deck promo cards. Um, you know, I'm still trying to decide like that's 130 or 150 cards, something like that. Those could all go up a good bit down the road. And I'd be sitting on a little, little gold mine stash of that stack of war turtles. But maybe now is the time to let some stuff go. So I'm trying to figure that out. Anyways, guys, um, tomorrow, if this gets uploaded tonight, um, for those of you that have stayed to the end, tomorrow I will have a live stream. Um, I have the next two days off, so I'm really excited about that. So I will be doing a live stream tomorrow. I have no idea what we're gonna do, what we're gonna talk about. Maybe we'll just do a general discussion. Maybe I'll just ask people questions. Maybe people will ask me questions. I don't know what we're gonna do. I'm still pivoting from my traditional, you know, style strategy of YouTube of just opening product and hanging out with everybody. Um, it's expensive to do that and continue doing that. So I'm trying to do that less and be a little more unique. Um, anyways, guys, appreciate you for supporting the channel and watching. Um, peace.